So the Anthropic team is shipping like no tomorrow, and they've just released something called Cowork. Now, if you are a Claude code user like myself, this changes nothing for you. What it does offer is everyone else who hates terminals with every fiber of their being, it gives them an alternative to get this gateway drug of what Claude code can do minus the terminal. So it's available right now to everyone on the Claude code max plan. And the way it works is typically you have the chat, you have the code tab, and then you have this brand new co-work tab. And the way it works is they probably took the greatest hits from the most common non-technical, non-pure coding activities, and they made them all available here. So you can see we have the ability to create files, crunch data, make a prototype, which is obviously going to be a vibe-coded artifact. You could send messages and do things that normal to-do list apps would do. So even more startups now should be scared because as Claude Code integrates itself into the lifestyle, it basically creates a purposeful layer of abstraction for Claude Code for everyone that does not want to hear the word code. It makes it that much stickier of a product. So if we take an example here and we click on crunch data, it will pre-prompt for you. So even this, you have to just swap out the topic. You can say work in a specific folder. So in this case, I can pick a different folder. For me, I created one using Claude code where I made a bunch of CSVs about world demographics. So if I click on this and I click on always allow, and I could say research and analyze all the files in this folder. Okay. And then by default, most of the functionalities will say, ask any clarifying questions and share a plan on how you'll approach this. And this is primarily if you wanted to do something like organize files on your computer. Behind the scenes, you don't want it to just one shot YOLO it. So it goes, analyzes the files, comes up with a plan for you, and then helps you execute said plan. So in this case, if I click on let's go, I'll just do Opus 4.5 since we're dealing with some data crunching. And then if you didn't know what to pick, it would tell you, what would you like me to dig into? Do you want competitors, customer feedback, a data set, how I spend my time? And this would automatically plug into that variable we had before. So it gives everyone this template that you can use. And if you're a power user, then go and use Claude Code. If you are mid to intermediate or you want to dip your toes into what Claude Code could offer, this will give you a little teaser. So if we click on let's go, it will go and interact with our actual computer. And while this is running, you can still use things like connectors, like the or adding and reading and writing notes if you're on a Mac, or you could use natively the Claude in Chrome in combination with this. So you could have Claude in Chrome and then Claude on your computer working hand in hand. And you could see it is now analyzing those 10 CSV files. These are the identified files. It's asking me multiple choice question, which is interesting because if you were to use Claude code, there's this function called ask user input tool, where when you make a plan now, it always comes up with this multiple choice of what kind of app do you want to build? How do you want to build it? So it's the exact same teaser experience right here, where if I can click on, let's say visual dashboard, and then I say what output format, let's say interactive HTML, and then how deep should the analysis go? I'll just say high level overview. And this will take all of that the exact same way Claude code would, and it will come up with the approach. And then we should be able to say, yep, yes, go for it. And then from there, it should be able to execute the request. So in under a few seconds, it created the 11 steps. It went through all the files, it read through them, and then it's creating and updating a to-do list. And then you could see at the side here, this is the progress in real time. So instead of having to watch it the old fashioned way on the to-do list in Claude code, it can go step by step. And then now it's generating the HTML dashboard for all the different CSVs. And after five minutes, you could see that all the progress is done here. It's done things like implementing interactivity and styling and verifying that the dashboard actually renders. This is the resulting artifact. So in Claude code, this would just be a file in your folder. And then you can see all the context of the result. You can click on here, open in Google Chrome. This should open up right here and you can take a look at the world population data. You have Africa, you have South America. Not sure if the filter is working and I'm actually happy about that because I want to see if we can leverage the Chrome connector. So if I go on here and we make sure that Claude and Chrome is working, I'll be like this. 
Okay, so can you go on to the Chrome browser using the Claude and Chrome connector and try to interact with the dashboard? Because I noticed that when I use the filter and I actually changed the filter, nothing actually happened. So take on the role of an actual user, take that user persona, and then go and interact, look at the dashboard, see what's working, see what's not working, and then iterate accordingly. So now we have that exact same experience that you'd have on Claude Code where you use something like Playwright or using the Chrome extension for Claude to go and open the browser. Typically, you'd have to say the words localhost and then go and review it. So in this case, you don't have to say the word localhost. It can do it for you. And all we have to do is click on always allow actions on the site. And then it will see that maybe it didn't load it correctly. So if we go back here, watch the play by play, you could see the that it's navigating. It's using the computer. It's going to run the command again. Then it will loop in circles. It won't make you sit through this and we'll jump to the final part. So it's good that this happened because I wanted to show you it over engineered trying to make this work. So first, it tried to spin up this HTML file, which it could literally just double click and open in any browser, but it didn't. It went to actually run localhost the way you would on Claude Code. And then when you, when you navigate, it just wasn't working no matter what. So then it went to the length of going to a free HTML website to load the HTML file into that website to then render it. So it's like loading a web page within a web page within a web page for no reason. So I used this thing called CodePen, and it still wasn't working. So I interrupted it, and I just very sassily said, you don't need to do this. Just load the HTML in any browser and audit it. So then it apparently has found the issue I was referring to anyway without having to open it, and then opens it on these lines. Now, again, this is brand new, just released a few hours ago. So I'm sure as it's wildly released, all these little bugs will get resolved. Right now, it's just editing the dashboard. Fingers crossed, it's just straightforward. This is the updated progress, the updated artifacts. And while this is running, again, the core thing here is if you are a consultant, if you are someone who's on a team where you're the developer, you're trying to disseminate the power of Claude Code, this is a good entry point. So now apparently it has fixed it. So if we go over and we investigate it and I refresh this HTML and I click on Asia, do we get some updates? Looks like we are. If I do North America, looks like we're getting some updates here. Is it the most perfect, beautiful dashboard in the world? No, but we did one shot it with a very basic prompt. So that's one small taste on the crunch data side. Obviously we can vibe code. This is not gonna be groundbreaking. If we do something like organize files, we can say, let's say my downloads folder, and I'm gonna say organize to the best of your ability. You know, you could actually just plug in this little button and it will auto inject it there. And I don't need Opus for this. It's like bringing a nuclear bomb to a gunfight, which is unnecessary. So this will go through the folder. And again, it will come up with the plan because in their auto prompts, it always tells you what the plan is. So now it's creating a markdown file called plan. And I'm not sure if it will pop up in the artifacts, but this is what would happen in normal Claude code. And after I created the organization file right here, which you could see, this is the markdown file. You can click and reveal the preview. So if I just drag this over, if I can, all right, a little bug there, but you can see breaks down all the plan. And once we're done there, it gives you the full plan of how many audio recordings there are, different active projects, everything involved in there that you could organize. It tells you exactly how it should organize them. And then if you're happy with it, does this folder structure work for you? Should I proceed with modification? So it acts as your turnkey wizard. So once we're good and we are good from there, what we can do is go and do something like send a message, help me write a message about, let's say email reply, and then it will auto fill it for you as well. And that's pretty much it. This is really the whole point of this is to structure it in a way where this is as least intimidating as possible and gives people the taste of Claude code without throwing them into the deep end, downloading a terminal and having to figure it out from there. So is this worth upgrading to Max for? Absolutely not. But by the time this comes out to everyone, it will be just one more upgrade, one new rung on that ladder where you go from chat to co-work. And once you're happy with that and you really want more firepower, then you go to this beautiful tab and enter the world of Claude Code.